go. Hey guys, it's Tim. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I'm in a good mood today in terms of my favorite team as well as my, uh, just my <laughs> but anyways, we're back. Okay, child. We're back. Uh, Cam 15 and the Red Wolf back again with another One Piece arc review. And funny, funny. I'm known as the Red Wolf, yet look at what I'm wearing. Blue. Yeah. You're, you're wearing my color, man. You're wearing my coat. It's actually maroon, but okay. It's, I guess it's a shade of red. Yes. But uh, anyways, um, we're back with another One Piece arc review. And this time we are reviewing Thriller Bark. <laughs> or how about I say this? Thriller Bark. Sorry, Michael Jackson reference. Oh, oh, oh okay. I, 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 just got, I just got what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Um, why, why do I feel like Oda got Thriller Bark just for Michael Jackson's Thriller Live? Just the first part. Maybe he did. I don't know that. But anyways, uh, we're here to talk about Thriller Bark. And even though I did sound pretty enthusiastic about the way I said Thriller Bark, I don't know in terms of Denzel's case, but, but for me... <sighs> I mean, it's all right, man. I mean, I, I know it's not the best art, but... It's all right for what it's worth. It's a good introduction for uh, for um, Brooke. Yeah. And then other than fucking Moria, Absalon, Corona, personally, who I think is probably the best villain in this out of all the others. <laughs> well, well, do I com I consider fucking Hogback even better than Moria and freaking Absalon. Absalon is a freaking perverted bastard who wanted to freaking marry Nami this entire arc. And then Moria, oh God. Can I just say he's up there for me in terms of one of the worst One Piece villains. I did not like him whatsoever. <laughs> All I saw him do was run, 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 run as fast as he can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Something like that. Um, anyways, like I said, you can tell by my reaction, I do not like Thriller Bark. Like Skypea, it's a very comedic arc, but the problem is I do not like, I don't like, I do not like this more than I do not like Skypea. I prefer Skypea over Thriller Bark. Just mostly because, I don't know, the start is fine, the middle is what kills me. And then really the end is like, okay, let's do this thing. Morally when it gets to the Kuma part, the other part I was like, kill me now. How many times this guy, you know, will survive? Fun fact, he doesn't survive for long once you get to the Wano arc, but okay. Um, anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna be here to talk about it. Um, your thoughts before we start. Your your thoughts about Thriller Barton's up before we start talking about the story points. Like I said, it's all right. I mean, I mean, I get that. I get that. There that I also have a few problems with it too. But you really think it's better than Skypea? Really? I think it's better than Skypea. I mean, I think. I think. I, mean, I think. I mean, I mean, I mean, you think it's worse than worse than Skypea? Uh. I personally believe I prefer Skypea over. Hmm. I never heard that before, but okay. <laughs> the middle part freaking kills me. At least the middle part in Skype, even though it's dragged out and long, it keeps me entertained. <laughs> this, when I was watching it the first go around, I was kind of like, so, uh, okay. We're just getting chased by zombies constantly. And if he fights the main villain, which is controlled by oars and... Anyways, we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. 
this is probably gonna be the first one piece where we our differences may differ. We might have differences here, but all in favor of love and war, it's our opinions. Our opinions must differ. Anyways, where we last left off is uh we got two, well, I shouldn't say two new crew members. We got a new crew member and the return of two more crew members, our returning crew members and Robin and Usopp, and a new crew member and Frankie and stuff like that, as well as, I guess you can say, another new crew member in the Thousand Sunny, which is the new ship. Um, and you can see when the arc... Is, 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 is my screen coming off too dark? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a little dark. Hang on, let me turn on the light. I'll pause. Okay, sorry for that quick cut. Uh, as you can see, Denzel's area is more lit up. Um, anyways, going back to what I was saying, um, they're obviously enjoying the very masterful you know, nice new ship, you know, Frankie made for them. Um, you just see them doing a bunch of different things. Like Luffy and Usopp are like fishing in the aquarium. Zoro's typically sleeping. Uh, Chopper's doing more doctor medical stuff. Sanji, I believe he was cooking. I don't know. I forgot what Robin was doing. Frankie, he was doing what Frankie does. And then Nami, who, well, let's just say it's not the first of this arc. She's put in very sexual scenes here. Um... Because this isn't the first bath scene we haven't seen of Nami. Okay, okay I'll, t I'll take my Nami. Uh, I'll take my half-naked Nami, I'll say that. Anyways, um, even though you can say to an extent she was kind of damsel in distress type of levels that I hate when it comes to anime of chicks. Um, anyways, um, so three days after leaving Water 7, um, Zoro sees this barrel floating out in the water. They eventually fish it up. They you know they think there's like oh food and sake or beer or whatever you, you want to call it in there or the alcohol. I'll just say alcohol. Um, and they open up, and next thing you know, you see this red light or what I would say is a flare light up into the sky, which essentially you know tricks them into getting lured into Thriller Bark. But um, essentially that happens. And next thing you know, um, Nami senses or sees that there's gonna be a storm coming and stuff like that. And by using one of the dock systems, they avoid the storm, which leads them into the Florian Triangle. Um, so once they're in like this clouded area in the Florian Triangle, which they're already contained into Thriller Bark really, they run into a decrepit old ship with a, yes, a skeleton singing, and they see him, and, um, yes, um, now, Luffy goes up there along with Nami and Sanji, and what is the first thing that, uh, Brooke says to Nami? May I see your panties? <laughs> yes, and we find out this very perverted swell to an extent perverted skeleton, is a guy by the name of Brooke. Now, Luffy actually asked him, like, hey, why don't you join the crew? Because he can sing and he's a skeleton. And it's just Luffy. Now, um, now the thing is about Brooke is, because you're wondering, because even I was wondering, like, how is a skeleton talking? Now, the thing is, what happens is we find out that, you know, now Brooke, He's like literally over like crazy years of old. He's like, I think right now he's like 90 years old, which is old for him. I think so. But um, Brooke, um, his devil fruit is the Yomi, no, the Yomi Yomi no Mi. In other words, is the rev, revive, revive fruit. Essentially what happens is he gets a second chance at life if he dies one time after eating his fruit. The bad part is, go ahead. So, so it's only a one-time use, pretty much? Yes. Yeah. When we're led to believe it's only a one-time use, because, yeah. But, um, yeah, um, it's a pretty interesting devil fruit, but, you know, I guess I can say is like, well, you know, and, and it's funny because somebody brought up, it's like, okay, so uh, say that's your, uh, well, even after you eat the fruit, um, you still can't swim. Which, man, talk about a freaking terrible uh, way to go out. Um, so uh, you could say, 
it's a pretty useful uh, devil fruit, but at the same time, you can say it has its clear disadvantages. And it's funny because I was listening to a YouTuber say like, well, what would happen if you like, I don't know, say you died of drowning and then you get revived again because you ate the yummy, yummy, no me, but then you die again because you can't swim. <laughs> See, now that's when the devil fruit would suck. Yeah, well. I wonder what, I wonder what possessed them to eat that very right, very right fruit. Hmm. Well, I, I, know, I think he said why, I just don't remember. Um, put that in the comment section if you actually remember. But I think this is, and this is like just some of the case where some people who eat devil fruits just don't know that it's a devil fruit. I think from what I remember, I think Brooke just ate the fruit and, you know, he didn't know what it was until like later after he, you know, passed away the first time and then got brought back to life. So, um, yeah, you know, after they bring him aboard their ship and they, you know, are having a nice little dinner and stuff like that. Brooke, uh, uh, well, actually, first, Usopp mentions the fact because he looks at Brooke, he's like, uh, why do you have no shadow? And Brooke says, uh, yeah, um, I actually got my uh, shadow stolen from me. Um, and essentially, what happens is he can't also leave the Florian Triangle because if he leaves the Florian Triangle without a shadow, he essentially disintegrates into dust. In other words, a Thanos type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess you say when I first heard that I was like, okay, what the hell is going on here? That's that's actually a pretty scary thought. Uh and I guess that was your first reaction to that, dude, what you just said. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, dang. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Gekko Moria is a pretty uh bad bad villain to begin with, but that's a pretty uh he probably has like one of the best devil fruit powers you could probably get. Yeah, probably. Well, in terms of, I guess, trying to say finish people off for good. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll get to we'll get to Moria soon. Um, anyways, the gates to Thriller Bark essentially close in on them, and Brooke is like, "Yeah, you guys should probably put your best efforts to getting the hell out of here." Um, so um, yeah. Now then, you just see Brooke essentially do a Sonic the Hedgehog reference by running on water. Um, yes. So uh, he may not be able to swim, but he can run on water, which is his trademark, literally. Um, so um, the next thing um, that happens is, like standard old Luffy, he wants to explore Thriller Bark. But obviously, and it's funny because I like the fact how they totally changed Usopp's look where, you know, they make him look like he's some kind of freaking dude who's trying to prevent, you know, zombies. Like, he's got garlic around his freaking neck. Um, he's got, like, a freaking a cross type of little pendant and stuff like that. He wants nothing to do with this stuff. I will give Oda his credit. He really did inspire this, like, arc after, like, Hall and gave it, like, Halloween town type of vibes. Um, how Thriller, Thriller Bark, this name says it all. Thriller, Michael... Jackson. I probably should have looked that up if he did get that inspiration from the Michael Jackson Thriller song. Just from the standpoint of just the way, you know, the arc is and the way it looks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I would say, hey, if you want to watch One Piece, you know, around Halloween time, this would be a great arc to watch it. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I actually have a Halloween recommendation for you. An anime recommendation for you. Soul mm -hmm. Eater. Yes, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's actually, pre it's, actually, it's actually pretty good. I haven't finished watching it fully, but so far it's actually really good. Okay. Um, now, um, what happens is that um, Robin actually says, because they, they see, like, yeah, we're actually held together, or we're held in by these walls, so this must have been a trap and stuff like this. So what happens is they, get a little, they do a little reference to the going Mary by having, you know, one of the dog systems be a mini Mary that Frankie created. And uh, Usopp, Chopper, and Nami, yeah, weak-ass team, go to explore the island. Yeah, you send your worst players on the team or on, on to go and adventure the island and stuff like that. Um, also, in the meantime, after they leave, uh, Robin gets uh, nastily licked by uh, something 
which yeah. is going to be one of the more whoo, char- most hated characters, if well, not most hated characters, but a hated character nevertheless, mm-hmm. who is up there in your tiers of characters. Oh, speaking of, well, actually, hold on, let me say, I'll tell you later after the video, Denzel, because I saw your thing about Railgun and that one thing. About that one guy. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! Yes. <laughs> no. Well, more Shokoho. I'd rather see that than Mizuka. But okay. <laughs> hey, uh, Mizuka has a nice figure for 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 being, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're done talking that. We're done talking that. Anyways, so uh, Chopper, Usami, <laughs> Nami finally reach the island, and um, one, they get stuck, and uh, they later get out. They hit the island, and next thing you know, they get end up chased by a three-headed dog, or Celebris. Um, now, this guy also, this little bat creature called Hildon, essentially talks to them, and he says, would you guys like to meet Dr. Ogback? Um, who isn't already another effed up character in this, you know, show. Jesus, no, he he's definitely... His cackles in Japanese. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if it sounds the same in English. But it was all... Oh my God. I'm gonna have to, li- gonna have to listen to his freaking uh, English, you know, his English, la- his English laugh again. The only giggle I laugh, a repeated laugh I remember, is the horror, 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 or the she, she, she. Yeah, well, his is like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. I forgot what his English repeated laugh was. I think it's usually the same, usually, the English dub and the um subs have the same type of laughs. Laughs, the laughing like gimmick thing, or they try to keep it exactly similar to it. Um. Anyways, Chopper has actually heard of Dr. Hogback, which we find out from him is that Dr. Hogback was a famous doctor that went missing years ago, which kind of leads into his backstory, but okay. Um, essentially, when they eventually enter the mansion, they run to a girl named Sindri who's actually like legit chucking like freaking, I don't know, concreted tiles at them. Um, yeah, um, another thing is, yes, even though she's a zombie girl, she is a pretty attractive zombie girl. But we'll get to Sindri's little thing later. Um, and then they run into Hogback. Um, now, the reason why Hogback's on Thriller Bark is he says he's doing, um, you know, he was doing research on the zombie inhabitants here on Thriller Bark. And I saw his design. I was like, oh, yeah, he's not much to be trusted for. So, um, okay, we're all being duped here anyways, because we already know something effed up is going on here. So, uh, yeah, um, and then that's when, you know, we get a very questionable scene here, a very wow scene, and um, Denzel, would you like to talk about it if you'd like to? If you insist. Well, we cut back to uh, Nami in the bath. And uh, that's when she suddenly feels something um, grabbing her and then suddenly licking her. Uh. <laughs> I think there's, I think we're, we're done talking. Yeah, I think we're done talking. Yeah, essentially Absalon, it was all Absalon who did that. You know, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to say it was suggestive. Uh, it was very suggestive. It was almost up there with the R word right there. It was almost close to what a certain character did to a lovely Asuna. But uh, I guess the only difference is she was fully naked. Anyways, um, going on, going on. Um... Yeah, that happens. Usopp and Chopper finally get in. Also, before that, um, Nami does believe that Hogback is freaking lying, which who wouldn't know that he's lying? So, yeah. 
Um, also, the invincible person who, which is not Absalom, um, also said he wants to marry her and let her be his wife, or let her be his wife. Now, the other crew members finally get to shore. We see these funny montages going on with the fact that uh, they run into the Cerebrus and they tame it. Um, we have Luffy yeah. pushing down zombies and in, back into their grave sites, which I found hilarious. Um, <laughs> I found the funny thing when they let the um, little um, uh, Perona's little ghosts go through each other, and you have the funny scene where Zoro says, "Like I'm not good at <laughs> dog trash," and then you have Sanji and the freaking even the damn Cerebrus is freaking laughing at that joke, which was freaking hilarious. Oh man! So uh, yeah, of course that it, that was freaking hilarious. Like I said, the comedy here, top tier comedy here. Top tier comedy. I just don't like the execution of this arc. Anyways, um, yeah, now, going back to the other group, because it's not like there's not a lot of switching between both groups. Yeah, they're split into two groups. Don't worry, it'll be like three different groups going on at one time in this arc. Um, anyways, Nami sees and they find out that Sentry is actually a famous actor that died about 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, so it's okay. It's like, okay, so she died about 10 years ago. What the hell is going on here? Um, they eventually find a way to hog back's lab, but then they run into the person holding Brooke's shadow, Ryuma, who's an ancient samurai from the Wano, uh, the, the land of Wano, um, which is a hint to the Wano arc right then and there, um, and stuff like that. Like I said, um, they end up seeing these ghosts, um, Luffy's group, and if they pass through your body, you end up getting depressed, which, again, led to the funny Zoro scene where he said, I'm not good enough to be, like, dog trash. Um, so that was freaking funny. Um, they also run into this old man. I forgot. I totally forgot about this guy. Um, they run into this old man who essentially tells you the deal of, yeah, who the Shadow uh, Stealer is, and that is Gekko Moria, who is one of the warlords of the sea which I believe he's one of the last people to be revealed as one of the warlords, well, next to Kuma, one of the last people in the story to be revealed as one of the warlords of the sea um, and stuff like that. Um, now, again, cuts back to Nami and Usopp's and Chopper's group. Um, they, like I said, they get into Hotback's lab, seeing him do like a testing experiment on a zombie, um, and uh, they run into Ryuma. Eventually they get chased away. But in the meantime, the Invisible Man, which is Absalon, actually captures Nami and knocks her out. Now, his devil fruit is the Suke Suke no Mi, or in other words, the clear, clear fruit. Mm -hmm. She's essentially the damsel in distress till Sanji comes to her rescue. Okay, yeah, I'm done with that plot line because that plot line is disgusting. And it's not already bad as it's nuts perverted because, uh, yeah, just a few minutes later, and I guess you can say that, well, we'll talk about Sanji versus Absalom soon. Anyways, um, one, uh, another big mention, they also, Luffy fails to realize, which I'm even shocked how this even happened. So we find out that Thriller Bark isn't an island. It's a legit pirate ship. If not, and they say it's the world's largest pirate ship. So I just need to ask me a quick damn question. How the fuck are they in the Grand Line? There's no way you can tell me they put that massive ship all the way up the Red Line, or all the way up the um, Reverse Mountain. Either... Brother Bark was there in the Grand Line and Gekko Moria found it and just made that his home? Or he really did command a world largest pirate, pirate ship and somehow got it. The only way I can see how he got it across is he went through the Calm Belt. Maybe. But at the same time, apparently he went to the New World. So, I, I don't know. Can you please explain that? He had... He, the Thriller Bark had to be there in the Grand Line because I don't believe the fact that it crossed the freaking Calm Belt and it definitely didn't freaking go through Reverse Mountain. <sighs> oh, my God. I just heard that, and I was like, 
Wow. Wow. Anyways. Well, what can I say? The Florian Triangle, I'm guessing you can say, is a call to the Barum the um Barramuda Triangle or whatever that's called. The very haunted seas that no one dares to sail on. Mm -hmm. What happen to you if you sail on the Baruma Triangle? Or yeah, the Barramuda Triangle. I don't care. Anyways, um, another thing we get introduced to is uh, Lola, who is a fat pig woman. Um, That's was, rude. <laughs> That's rude. That's uh, just rude. I'm not wrong, am I? Or a warthog. That's what she is. Really. Because you can <laughs> Anyways, it's still a pig. Anyways, she wants uh, Absalon's D so bad, she wants to marry him to Kingdom Come, um, which is the other generic trope in this, which I actually found actually pretty fucking entertaining, to say the least, because it was hilarious that this one freaking zombie wanted Absalon so bad. He was like, oh, no, I ain't doing it. It's like, it's like you're just a regular dude and this, you know, this girl that you that is not I'm trying to be very nice here this girl that's not very attractive to, in your eye just comes up on you and say oh please let me be your girlfriend please let me be your wife please 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 please, please. and uh, you're like no uh, that's what, what Absalom was here at least that is what I found funny now he says I ain't marrying you I'm marrying this chick and which is Nami and that's when Lola gets all pissed and she's like, I'm gonna kill that little, you know, what. Um, now, um, what happens is Lola actually does run to Nami and stuff like that, but uh, Nami kind of sweet talks her way out of it by saying, oh, he's not gonna marry me. I don't even want to marry him. And she kind of tricks him to saying that Absalom wants to really marry her. So, uh, yeah, that's okay. That's one way to get out of the situation, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Um, also, um, while they're um, Luffy and the crew are adventuring the mansion that they finally get to, uh, yeah, Zoro and Sanji are just mysteriously gone. Uh, oh yeah, that part. Um, but then you know, Luffy, the group of Luffy, Robin, and Frankie, um, again. Um, they go up against these horde of zombies, and one of these Zor um, zombies actually shows up, and one of them with Zoro's shadow is called Jigoro, which is a zombie, essentially, of all of Zoro's techniques and everything. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a nice little funny little penguin. I forgot the Sanji zombie um, one. Yeah, I for yeah, I forgot his name. <laughs> um, but it's essentially Sanji's shadow put into, like, a penguin-like zombie creature. Don't even... Which has the same characteristics of Sanji, which is, one, he actually saves Nami in this arc, um, as well as he doesn't hit women. Mm -hmm. So he keeps the same Sanji tenacity. In fact, it comes to the point where Nami's like, why do you feel so familiar? And stuff like that. So, yeah, that happens. Um, yeah, they fight a guy named Jagoro. Funny name. And he talks just like Zoro and just in a decrepit way. Mm -hmm. Um, eventually, um, you know, Robin and Frankie actually escape and Luffy said, I'll take care of all these zombies, but eventually Luffy gets freaking captured. Um, yeah. also there's this really creepy spider and crap like that that chases Robin and Frankie. They get into mm -hmm. a fight and then also another thing is they're about to lose that fight. But then thanks to Brooke, he saves them and, uh, after they beat, um, the spider little guy, which I forgot his name to because I don't care. Um, this black thing comes out of his mouth, this black like cloud. And he, and Robin and Frankie bring this up and they're like, what the heck is that? And then Brooke is like, yeah, that's uh, the shadow going back to its original body. Now we find out that's the shadow of the old decrepit man who Luffy talked to earlier. I forgot what happened to him. I think he ended up dying or something like that. Um, I, I don't know what happened to him. Um, essentially what happens is when you beat these zombies that, uh, um, are, are, their, 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 their shadows go back to their original owners. Yeah. Now the reason why they, the people end up with the shadows is this. 
So Dr. Hogback actually makes the zombie bodies and then Gekko Mori steals the shadows. So he put the shadow light, the, sh the shadows life in the zombie's body. So they have life. There you go. Um, and Mo uh, this is when we get revealed what Gekko Mori's devil fruit is. And his devil fruit is the Kage Kage no Mi. Or in the English translation, the shadow shadow fruit. Um, now, if you ask me, in terms of his devil fruit, it's honestly, I already say, probably a pretty good devil fruit to have. You know, you just steal people's shadows. It's like, oh, I hate you. I'm going to steal your shadow, and I'm going to let you die. So, I guess so. one, and that'd be a very messed up devil fruit if that was in real life, because if somebody got a hold of that, they can literally just kill anybody they wanted to, free will. That'd be terrible mm -hmm. if uh, you would say, uh, you know, I'm type of freaking crazy person who had that power would just, you know, just constantly do that. Thank goodness devil fruits aren't real things. Heck, devil fruit doesn't even sound something like I would even eat because it has the name devil in it. Um, so, yeah, but what do I say? It's like a cursed power anyways. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Brooke actually brings the point. It's like, well, the one weakness to these zombies is if they intake salt, yeah, it's one hit KO. They're gone. So mm -hmm. he gives them bags of salt, and he's like, yeah, whenever you get into a pinch, make sure you spread some of these and let them let the salt go get in their mouths, and then next thing you know, it's over for these guys. So he runs off again to go confront Ryuma, which he runs into later. Now, we cut back to Luffy, who has been captured, and he gets his shadow stolen by Gekko Moria. And we see the big, gigantic Gekko Moria. Now, I will admit, Gekko Moria's design is unique. I will give him credit there. It is a unique design, and I like it. I just don't like his freaking character at all, whatsoever. He looks so beast. That too. Um, we also get some uh, very interesting information here, which I totally freaking forgot after all these freaking years, or after, you know, not watching the show, watching the past show. Um, he was defeated by Kaido in the New World. And that's how he lost most of his crew members, which I totally forgot. Which the crazy part is he probably technically has a pretty good shot against Kaido because all he has to do is steal the shadow. Mm -hmm. But you already know Kaido ain't letting that happen with what we know about Kaido. And now, yeah. in terms of the anime form, I don't know what's going on in the manga right now, but in terms of the anime, Kaido is something to be feared with. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, so again, it's a further thing referencing uh, Emperor of the Sea as well as the New World again, because that's the next place they're trying to go to. This is kind of like a dead stop. Anyways, Brooke also confronts Ryuma, who currently holds his shadow, and that's why he's trying to beat him to get his shadow back. Now, again, like I said, Absalom captures Nami, and then uh, what Moria does with Luffy's shadow is the fact that, uh, he puts it in this gigantic uh, giant being called Ors. And uh, Ors reawakens, and the first thing he asks for is food and essentially acts like Luffy. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, and then another thing I forgot to mention about the um, Kagi Kage no Mi. Um, and one, if you're asking why I like to use the Japanese names, they sound cooler than the English names. I'm sorry, they really do. Um, yeah, so if you still the... Um, the shadow of somebody who's really strong, you know, the person who takes the shadow, the zombie who takes the shadow, is strong, is just as strong as the person who, you know, shadow they got it from, which is pretty crazy. So you literally put Luffy, you know, shadow in this giant monster like creature body. Um, so, okay, now, going, going, going on, um, what happens is they eventually put Zoro, Sanji, and Luffy, because, you know, they're all knocked out, back on the Sunny. The other Straw Hats go, well, all the, all the other Straw Hats, with the exception of Nami, because she's captured, all go to, um, back to the ship to see how uh, Luffy's doing. They eventually reawaken. We also find out, um, you know, thanks to Frankie is, we find out that uh, Brooke is the pirate from 50 years ago that uh, essentially dipped on Laboon. 
And he really does care about Laboon and he wants to see Laboon again. And he just doesn't know if Laboon will remember him because he's essentially a skeleton. So that inspires Luffy to even more leave want to get, you know, Brooke on the crew and help him out. So yeah, now what Luffy does is this. Luffy goes after Moria, which <laughs> which literally becomes a fucking chase scene. A fucking chase scene. I'm not gonna speak more on that. Probably the best thing about this entire thing that I got out of here from the middle battles was Zoro versus Ryuma. Mm -hmm. Sanji goes to save Nami in a very... Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. All right, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna grow. No, because of my notes, I just lit <coughs> my notes literally. Okay, no, actually, <coughs> here's the battles that are set up. Luffy chases freaking Moria to Kingdom Come, and I'm freaking sick and tired of it because at some point in the arc, I was like, dude, how long is this gonna persist? He's stalling for time. You have Zoro obviously fight Ryu um, Ryuma, which is obviously the best thing. They're one of the best fights this arc has to offer. And out of all the Straw Hat matchups, the best one. Next is what I might say you could say some people call the downfall of Sanji's freaking character in his fight against Absalon. Um, probably would say the second best fight or that the stars are matched up again against is Chopper really going up against Hogback. And we get the backstory of Hogback and Sindri, which I would probably say is a close second to Zoro. Um... Actually, underrated fight for Usopp, uh, I totally forgot. Uh, Usopp's fight against Perona, which actually, shit, I don't even know where I'm going to rank that fight, which uh, I thought was hilarious and funny. Um, and yeah, um, okay, look, we're going to do a rundown of the battle. I don't need to say anything more about Luffy versus Gekko Moria, because for the one, pa for one start, Gekko Moria is owning Luffy, and two, he's just a fucking chicken, and he just runs. End of story. Don't need to go there. Zoro versus Ryuma. Oh my god! Great sword battle! Great sword battle. I don't know what about you, Denzel, but I really enjoyed this fight, man. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> oh my god. Especially wow. seeing Zoro in action again, because everybody knows that he's my favorite character in the series. Yes, and he goes up against, um, you know, and, but, and he's fighting with two swords here. He's fighting with two swords here, guys. And he eventually beats Ryuma, and he gets Ryuma's sword, legendary sword from Wano, uh, Shushui, which by the time you get to Wano, people think he stole it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he gets that. So um, that's obviously a nice thing. And also it's a black blade, um, just like, uh, you know, um, just like a uh, freaking Mihawk. But again, when you get to Wano, people have an issue with him having it because they think he's a criminal and he stole it from Ryuma's grave. And which we find out, you know, they later stole, they later got the dead body of Ryuma, which means they went to Wano and literally stole all that stuff. So yeah, anyways, anyways. I, I, I like how we're saying future references when, that, when, when we're not even so far yet. <laughs> Well, they, that's what they said in the that's what they said in the show, even back in Thriller Bark. Like, and plus it makes sense because Moria, you know, had to go to Wano because Kaido at the time was probably still overruling Wano. Mm -hmm. So, makes sense how he got a hold of, you know, Ryuma in his body and stuff like that. Um. Okay. Next fight. Next fight. Next fight. Um. Sanji versus Absalon. I'm going to get this fight out of the way so we can move on to the better fights. Now, people say this was probably the start of Sanji's downfall as a character until really Whole Cake Island shows up, um, which goes back to giving us badass Sanji, even though he had little badass moments sprinkled here and there in the time skip, or, or in the post-time skip. Go on. Uh, go on, go on. Okay. So, one, you have a somewhat close to be 
marriage scene going on here between Absalon and a knocked out Nami. Hey. So one, which I found hilarious, the fact that there's this dude who's pretending to be, there's a zombie like pretending to be the damn priest who is supposed to sign off on the marriage and everything. And Absalom's trying to hurry all this crap up and he's like, could you please hurry up and get to the kiss your bride part? And stuff like that. And then, it, it, no, I'll admit that part was hilarious. That part was funny. Because it's a typical, you know, trope where you have a character trying to rush in and try to finish up a marriage, student in love. So, you know, the hero can't come in and save the day. But too late. You have Sanji literally jump skipping like he's Red Riding Hood himself in a very, I don't know, stupid way. And yeah, you see this fight. And then this is when people say, you know, you would think you like Sanji, but uh, Sanji's just as perverted as the damn Absalom because you find out he was actually doing research on his own little free time in terms of back when he was a freaking child that he wanted the clear, clear fruit or the suke suke no me, and he wanted that so he could be a peeping Tom for anything. And then that's why you have some character people saying, this is when Sanji's character takes a hit for the worst. Mm. I'm not gonna say I disagree with them, but I heard that, I was like, that's funny, but come on, you know, this is when they effectively kind of for, well, he still kind of is that to an extent now. But this is when, really, I would say from Thriller Bark on to, I guess you can say, Punk Hazard, he becomes a Master Roshi character in terms of being a perverted old fart that just wants, I want girl boobies and booty and I just want girls to myself. I'm sorry, I'm bleeding expletive this video here. The so Sarah was kind of disturbed and disappointed. I was like, so he's Master Roshi now. Wonderful. He's been Master Roshi. What do you mean? He was uh. Master Roshi since Island. I fucking hate that. Um anyways, um he beats freaking he 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 beats uh Absalon. It's too bad that somebody else already takes Absalon's devil fruit powers later in the future. I won't say who. But somebody takes it. So maybe that might be well, actually, no. Um, but um Sanji's still gonna be upset. And you know, it isn't the first time they bring up another devil fruit that Sanji's always wanted. But now at least he's got something handy from his family line that he can be the peeping Tom. Hell, they did it in freaking Wano. So he got his wish. You weren't we weren't supposed to tell anybody about that yet. <laughs> Most people already watched freaking One Piece. I don't care. Most. Keyword most. Anyways, um, like I said, he he it doesn't matter because Sanji gets what he wants later down in the road. So essentially he has what he got. Well, we'll get to it when the time comes, but okay. Um next fight, next fight, next fight. He he ends up saving Nami and being the hero and stuff like that. Also, Nami's in a wedding dress, also. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's it. Time to move on. Um, anyways, <sighs> we move on to what I might say I'm actually going to get to get out of my way. I'm going to go to the funny fight, which is Uso versus Perona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Denzel, I could you not. Just all the funny moments here in this fight alone from... Jesus, the way Perona was stunned that it that her ghosts were not was not affecting Usopp. And then the freaking five-ton freaking mallet trick again works on another villain. And then the cockroaches. Um <laughs> what was your thought about this freaking fight, man? This guy just this guy just turned a fight into a circus. Yes. Now, the reason why he's not affected by Perona's ghost, which actually I forgot to mention, her devil fruit is called the Horo Horo no Mi. Funny, funny how that's almost called Horo Hollow or Horo Horo. <laughs> I like I like how you said the funny, funny, it's just funny twice. Like, the <laughs> yeah. Um, the English translation for the Horo Horo no Mi is the Hollow Hollow fruit. 
again, I already said what the powers is. And essentially, you know, the reason why Usopp says, like, the reason why your trick doesn't work on me is because I'm already negative. So, yeah, Usopp, we know, is a very negative person. So <laughs> those don't work on him, essentially, because all he thinks is negative thoughts or what could go wrong and stuff like that. And we just see peak Usopp as, at his finest. Um, he beats Perona by essentially making her pass out because of cockroaches, fake ones. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, the girl that's supposed to be scaring the ever living day, daylights out of people um, is scared of cockroaches, and she passes out, and that's it. Along to the, with the mention that she fell for the five-ton mallet trick, which is a totally fake type of thing. So I'm like, yeah, really, can it was up lift a five-ton mallet? Okay. Mm-hmm. So they did bring that back from all the way back from Alabasta, so that was pretty funny. Now, we're probably going to get into the most effed up situation fight here, and that is the fight between Hogback and Chopper with, I guess you could say, Sindri and Robin on the side. Now, um, what we find out here, which is pretty effed up here, is in the past, because we get Hogback's um, backstory, is the dude was like, I guess you can say, you know, lovesick for Sindri and really did like her like that. And let's just say it's, you know, rejection gone wrong. Um, she kind of rejected him and then saw another dude go out with her. And to say this is all effed up, he did all this thing, all these things. And he does it very visibly by, like, forcing sin- the zombie syndry to do all these very, you know, bad acts that you probably would not do or an abusive freaking type of guy would give to a girl. Um, but like making her freaking sit on the ground like a dog, essentially. Pretty messed up stuff here. And he did this all as a thing of revenge. And I'm like, so you're doing this just to get back because your crush never liked you back. That's what. Yeah. Um, it was messed up. It was messed up. Honestly, I felt for it. And when they beat Hog back, um, and you just saw just the innocence, the la- I guess you could say the last bit of innocence in the zombie Sindri, because you could see the tears as well as the nice smile she gave. You could see that she had a little bit of humanity still inside of her somewhere. So, uh, yeah, Hogback, it was presumed he died, but he still survived. Um, but don't explain to me how you get stepped on by a damn giant and you still live to tell about it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that happened. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Um, this is when we get the uh, Team Straw Hat Pirate Battle versus uh, Oars, which... Damn, you couldn't get any freaking bigger than this. That almost reminds me somewhat close to the freaking Douglas Bullet fight here. Just differences, it's with the Straw Hat Pirates. So they do most of their best attacks on Oars. And to an extent, Oars is, yes, feeling it, but he doesn't really care. And uh, the more he's fighting, it's more he, it's like he's developing Luffy's gum gum powers. Mm-hmm. Because you can see his arms, like, legit stretch, and it even comes to a point where he even believes, which is when we get the Lu- N- Nightmare Luffy versus Forrest fight. He's like, I'm Luffy, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, going on, um, which I forgot to mention, Nami actually is trying to go back to the ship, and what happens is she sees Perona trying to escape because Perona finally awoken. Now, Perona's trying to escape, but then she runs into this... Uh, other guy called Kuma, who's another warlord of the sea. And uh, let's just say uh, all uh, freaking Mr. Uh, Moria does this. And uh, Perona's gone. So it scares the leper living daylights out of Nami. When I saw this, I was like, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, um, just so uh, things are going to be so good when they get out of this situation that they're already in now. Um, so, uh, yeah, that is crazy. 
And I'm like, so we got another threat we got to deal with. Just great. It's not bad enough we're dealing with a gigantic creature. Um, now, we find out he's looking for Moria. And um, the reason why he's looking for Moria is because the world government gave him the word, like, listen. Well, one, he's looking for Moria because in the aspect, we, not, we later know that Ace has been captured and they're calling the warlords of the sea for the execution. But we don't know that yet. But um, that's why he was mostly there. Also, um, he was there to kill everybody else that was on Thriller Bark that got in mm-hmm. That wasn't Moria. So that too. Um, anyways, um, again, like I said, um, Luffy is still, ch- well, what happens is Luffy finally loses him. He runs into this group of zombies, which these group of zombies help him, you know, get their shadows and he absorbs their shadows and he becomes freaking Nightmare Luffy, which I think is a very badass looking form. I'm not going to lie. Um, also, we also do find out, uh, yeah, Oars is, uh, well, I think this is after the Nightmare Luffy fight, but we see a nice fight between Nightmare Luffy and, uh, um, and Oars, which it was funny because they're both like, no, I'm Straw Hat Luffy. But he's like, no, I'm Straw Hat Luffy. Which, yes, it was a funny, funny thing. Um, we see that uh, also Gecko Moria, he was con- somewhat inside uh, Oars and controlling him. So he was in there the entire time. Great. So we wasted our entire time just to find that. Um, essentially, you know, what happens is they end up beating Oars by Luffy, Nightmare Luffy giving one big attack. And it looks like, oh, they did it. They saved the day. They're going to be go free. They're going to get their shadows back. Because also the, all their shadows are gone and stuff like that. Um, but also Luffy loses the shadows he consumed as well. Now then, we find out, oh, Mari is not down for the count. And he does this move called uh, Shadow Asgard, which it turns him into like a giant freaking creature-like thing after absorbing every shadow. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, now um, the sun also starts to rise. So they need to hurry up before they actually get disintegrated too. Um, now with do the combination of gear second and gear third, uh, Luffy ends up knocking the ever-living shadows out of Gekko Moria and wins easily. I'm going to talk about Gekko Moria real quick as, my, as a villain. Dude was probably one of the worst villains I've ever seen on my damn TV screen watching this damn show. And to say that, honestly, I prefer that. We're going to get into two arcs later, which I, well, two arcs later, which I think is the worst One Piece villain, which is freaking... Horty Jones. Um, all this dude was running. I, I, I'm sorry. He didn't put any fear inside me as an antagonist. I don't know if this was you, Denzel, but he didn't do it for me as an antagonist. He just ran, and when Luffy just easily beat him with a combination of gear second and gear third, when all he had to do was kind of hold onto the shadows till the sun freaking raised, and then his you know little nuisances are out of the picture. Uh, he didn't really put that much fear. He just he just looked like a literal clown from 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 the circus. Especially, especially, especially with his boots. Um, Goku Moria, he doesn't do it for me as a villain. I honestly think he's not. He he's one of the worst villains in One Piece. He he just doesn't do it for me. He was just he was like that antagonist that is just there to annoy the our protagonist that's what he's just there for he's just there to be a thorn in the side of the protagonist and the main character mm-hmm. anyways they all get their shadows back as they're disintegrating so they're all saved yay that's good that's great they're all saved the day yada 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 you know um and the thing is this yeah so when you think of everything's all saved uh, things couldn't get anything worse because kuma shows up and, uh, yeah, the combination of, um, you know, uh, the combination now, well, first things first, Kuma's Devil Fruit is the Niyuki Niyuku, Niyuki Niyuki no Mi, or the Paw Paw Fruit. Niyuki Niyuki Niyuki. 
Yeah, yeah I, it's hard to pronounce. It's hard to pronounce. Yeah, I'll try saying that three times. Jesus. Um, yeah. The combination of Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, and Frankie because Luffy is literally out of con commission. He cannot fight no more. He he is done. He's out for the count. Along with the stacked on power of Nightmare Luffy that exhausted him. We already know Gear Saturn and Gear Thor takes a lot out of him. So he's completely spent. And also Kuma is also there to kill them all as well. Mostly Luffy, but really than that. Now, they're all, the guys all go in for their attacks. Mostly his crew go all in for attacks because a rightful crew would stand beside their captain and protect him, which I do enjoy and I do like that. Hey, they're like, no, -uh, this is our captain. We need to protect him. He's done so much for us. Um, now we need to have his back. But uh, <laughs> now their attacks work. Now, one instance is they see that uh, Kuma has, um, I would say, like, you can see he clearly has like robotic type of body type of implants in him that they show the mention, which obviously hints at the, you know, at the um, Kuma robots. I forgot the crap. I forgot. I forgot the robots. But the the, the robots those are freaking annoying in Pirate Warriors Four. Um, yes. <laughs> God. Um. Any anyways, what happens next is. You know, Kuma says, oh, look, I'm here to kill Luffy. And the remaining pain he has left, I can finish him off easily. But Zoro, you know, after knocking out Sanji, because Sanji said, no, I'll take his pain. But Zoro knocks out Sanji, and he's like, I'll take his pain. You know, mm -hmm. sa spare, sacrifice me. I'll sacrifice my life for my captain. Which was probably one of the most craziest things. And again... Goes back to the Zoro Luffy relationship in the aspect of no, Zoro is that dude where he's got Luffy's back 100%, even though he does get fed up with him time to time. He follows Luffy like a good, well, a good crewmate would follow their captain. And, you know, we know Luffy has a lot of trust in Zoro, as well as Zoro has a lot of trust in Luffy. And I just love their dynamic. Your thoughts about that part? When he's like, I take the burden. He's he's definitely fit to be vice captain. So, and, my, and I and I already and I already mentioned it in the previous video. But yeah. Earl is definitely alpha. Um, I'm guessing you want to take this next scene with how badass it was. Okay, so yeah, Zoro takes Zoro pretty much takes the pain that. Kuma absorbed from Luffy. Oh my god. <laughs> like how long how long has it been after that? It was like a fudge. Like I forgot how many hours it was after that. But all yeah. you see Damn dude, you see Sanji go up to him and he's like and you just see Zoro in a cross arm position. Battered, bruised, just man. Just to see that was all the punishment Luffy took, and Zoro took that. And you, ju you just have him sitting there, like, which gives one of the most iconic lines in One Piece history, where he says, with his arms crossed, nothing happened. And after I saw that, I was like, shit. What am I watching? And you cannot lie to me. That was one of the best, not only lines, but one of the best moments of One Piece history. Like, mm -hmm. that's great. Now, Robin actually overheard what happened, really, and stuff like that. She just kept it to herself. Um, I think Zora did end up telling Sanji later on what happened um, and stuff like that. They're just going to keep it from Luffy because they don't want, you know, Luffy to know about this stuff. Um, to wrap up this arc, um, what is it? Well, one, Moria does escape, and he's going to uh, go get ready and wrap up with the other warlords to get ready for uh, the Marine Ford incident going on and stuff, because uh, in the papers it says that Ace is going to be executed, which Luffy and crew does not know at this time period yet. Um... We also do get the backstory of Brooke, 
which explains the backstory of him and Laboon, which is pretty emotional and stuff like that. Now knowing that it was Brooke from the beginning. So that is, that's the thing. That's kind of it. And then that's when he officially joins, you know, Luffy and stuff like that. And yeah. Also, he's a swordsman. I forgot to mention as well. A a swordsman who can sing and have an effect on his targets as well. Um, Another thing we also get to see is, uh, yeah, Lola, she's a warthog no more. She's a regular old human being. And she actually is good friends with Nami and stuff like that now. So, yeah, you remember that uh, Paper Ace gave Luffy all the way back in Alabasta? Yeah, so Lola actually tells us that um, that paper is called a Viva card. And essentially, it marks you in the direction or, you know, it's locked into the direction of the, per- of the owner who, you know, you got it from, which Luffy got it from Ace. Now, the difference, the thing with Ace is, I mean, Luffy's Viva card he got from Ace is, it's slowly burning. And Lola's looking like it, like, it, like oh, uh-oh, that's not good. If something like that is happening, that means the person who gave you that's life is in grave danger, which we knew, we know that, you know, um, Luffy is to be, I mean, not Luffy, Ace is to be executed um, because he got captured by Marshal D, well, by Teach. Um, now, Luffy is like... Nah, he's my brother. Ace will be cool. <laughs> Just wait till you find out in a few days, my friend. Um, yeah, Luffy, Luffy kind of gets the attitude like, ah, oh, no sweat. Ace will be fine. He's my brother. He's strong. He'll get out of whatever predicament he is and, um, and stuff like that. Also, Lola does give the Beaver card uh, because she breaks. She makes a mention by saying... um. She gives a beaver card, which is her mother's own beaver card, which will say, well, if you go to the new world and you come across my mother, make sure you tell, you know, her that it's me, Lola, and stuff like that. And she gives Nami um, her beaver card now. That is brought up later in a future arc that I'm not going to get to. But, uh, yeah, that has some very big significance, too, on that. Um, so, yeah, um, as well as it makes more sense why Lola was looking for a, uh, husband. Um, now, anyways, what happens, um, after that is, which to wrap up the arc before they leave, throw their bark, um, we do see Kuma kind of getting chewed out by Sengoku for not eliminating, you know, really the straw hats and stuff like that. And also we find out that, uh, yeah, Marshall D. Teach... Uh, our Blackbeard became a warlord of the sea because he captured eight. Or, yeah, because he captured eight. Ace, which he replaces Crocodile. So, uh, yeah, that's not, you know, good. And next week, whoo, to say the next couple of arc reviews is, man, what I would say, the game changer of One Piece there, the thing that changes everything about One Piece, man, that, I, I literally can't wait to get to the next part. Mm-hmm. So, as we end off this video, again, like I said, my thoughts on Thriller Bark. Do I like this arc? Hell no. I like how it started off. I didn't like the middle. In fact, I hated the middle part. But then the ending of Kuma and everything, good job. Um, and plus it foreshadows what's expected to come later in Sabadee Archipelago, you know, Amazon Lily, Impel Down, Marine Ford, until we finally get past the pre-time skip into the post-time skip. So, yeah. Um, your closing thoughts on Thriller Bark, Denzel? Pardon? Your closing thoughts on Thriller Bark. Uh, like I said, it's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's the best start, but I still find it hard to believe that you like it less than Skypea. Yes, I know. It's hard to believe. Okay, okay. I think we said enough that we can say about Thriller Bark. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, next week, um, whether this video is getting uploaded, this video is getting uploaded Tuesday, obviously, you're checking this out, you know, on Tuesday. But, uh, you know, either none next Monday or Tuesday. Um, 
what's going to happen is uh, we're going to do a review of Sabari Archipelago Arc and Amazon Lily. And then after that, we'll be Impel Down and Marine for Now, how long that goes, that video goes, I have no clue. Um, we'll just have to find out where that goes. But uh, anyways, um, I can't wait to see, well, I can't wait to review the next couple of arcs because, man, they really do change the game for One Piece going forward after that. So, uh, yeah. So I think that's all we got to say. So if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on Thriller Bar. Did you have different opinions of Thriller Bar than I did? Um, you are, did you have similar thoughts like Denzel? Um, as well as hit that subscribe button to get more One Piece content. Again, I do review the One Piece anime um, each Saturday night after the episode comes out, as well as we're doing the arc reviews. We're almost literally hit the halfway point of the story. So these ARC reviews are going to be gone sooner or later. But trust and believe, after these ARC reviews, I'm going to be reviewing the movies and the specials next after this. Now, more than likely, Denzel's not going to be with me because he doesn't want to watch the movies. But it's fine. I'll do the movies myself. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's really it. And we'll check you guys out next week for the next One Piece ARC review. So this has been Camry 15. And the Red Wolf. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. So hopefully you guys are staying safe out there. And yeah, until then, guys. See you guys in the next video. Peace.